Hello everyone. This is second exercise in buffer overflow, and now this time we have a new application, mini share. So we'll again do the debugging. We'll attach the process with the Unity debugger. We'll try to see how we can control EIP and ESP, and then similar to SL Mail, we'll try to exploit this application and gain system access. So I have a mini share for web application running and then I have attached the process with immunity debugger then I have a small script it says uh, connect to one basically we have defined as a system argument here we will specify IP address and then the script will try to connect to that IP address on port number 80 then we will do a get request so there is a vulnerability input validation is not there in the get request so we'll try to send 2100 h and then we will close the http request by sending http 1.1 so this is a small uh, script we have uh, for basic debugging let's open the immunity debugger process is running and then okay and then we'll run the script so python many dot py and 192.168.1.12 is the IP address on this XP machine let's do that script has executed and on the back end we should be able to see application crash and if you notice EIP has crashed and that has been overwritten by user supplied input which is 41 41 41 41 so we know application is getting crashed and EIP is getting overwritten by uh, the is which we have sent now we need to identify similar to the last example uh, out of those 2100 bytes what are those four bytes which has replaced EIP so again go back to uh, Metasploit script user share Metasploit tools exploit and then create um, exploit Create tools, exploit, and then pattern create. Length this time is 2100, for example. We need to modify now script and send um, this unique value. So nano mini 1.py, and then instead of 2100 is we are sending. 2100 unique characters okay and close restart the application uh, no no yes and then application is restarted no, I don't want to archive anything uh, yes maximize this and execute script it has been executed and now we need to see the value okay there is a crash and we have a new value in EIP let's see uh, user share metasploit and tools exploit pattern this time offset and it is 36 68 43 and 35 let's see what number comes uh, 1787 so after 1787 next four bytes will be used to override the EIP go back to my script uh, on the same window nano quick verification uh, so we'll send is what was the number 1787 I believe 1787 1787 then uh, B 4 and then 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 let's send C 2100 minus 1787 minus 4 let's save the script 
and let's try it. So let's verify again. Uh, let me. So now we have, if we verify the script, so we are sending four Bs. Uh, let me restart the application. Restart. And then start the process, okay? Let me minimize it. So run the script. And we should see 42, 42, 42 in EIP. Okay, perfect. So 42, 42, 42, 42. So we are able to control EIP register. Uh, now, next step is try to see what all bad characters are there for this application. So open the script again. Nano mini. And then let's Call the bad characters. All set. So instead of C's, we will send bad cash. So bad cash. Restart application. And start the process. And then run the script again. Let's see. Okay, so follow ESP in dump. Uh, I could see. Uh, do you see bad cash? Uh, let's. Oh, sorry. That's that was EBP. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, A, C. So I don't see D here. So after C, again, random characters 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So D is not the right character for this application. Uh, nano, mini, and remove D from the bad cash. Again, restart the application. Uh, go to debug, restart, and enable this process. Perfect. So run the script, and we should see some traffic soon. Yes. So again, follow uh, ESP in dump. Now this time we have zero, one, two, three, four up to FF. So just two bad characters, zero, zero and 0D. So while uh, generating shellcode, we need to exclude these two bad characters. Next step, uh, how to redirect the execution of the program to the ESP. Okay, let me restart this. Now this application basically does not load uh, any DLL. So we do not have a DLL. Uh, for this specific application but we can choose any other uh, DLL basically where ASLR is disabled so let's pick this user 32.dll so go to user 32.dll uh, do we see here yes so let's load this and try to search for um, command which is jump ESP let's see if we have jump ESP instruction in this DLL. So we do have jump instruction. So let's copy this. Uh, so instruction is uh, 77 D8 AF 0A. So that's the memory address. So this memory address can jump our program execution to the uh, ESP where uh, our payload is. So go to again script and before we modify the script, let's generate a payload. So we have a payload, MSF Venom, uh, 
shell reverse TCP, local host Kali, and then local port 443, bad characters we have included, and then Shikata. So let's generate this. So copy this and start listener. Go to script and then remove the bad cache. I don't need bad cache anymore. Shell and we have the shell information now, the script. Now instead of B, we need to send, uh, we need to redirect the execution to jump PSP. So that address we have to write in uh, reverse direction 0A AF. 0a af then d877 d877 perfect then some knobs so that shell can be payload can be decoded in a memory so for shell for knob we need to type x90 mm. so let's say 10 knobs and then plus shell. Sorry, go to instruction again and then shell. So all set, uh, 1787A, then memory address for jump PSP, jump PSP will uh, forward will forward the instruction will forward the request to ESP memory location and then ESP has uh, a sh defined payload which will give us reverse shell. So let's save this. So cluster is okay. Go to debugger, exit the program, start the application again. Application is now running and if all is well, we should see uh, reverse shell on other window. So, yes, done. And let's wait if we can see reverse shell. We have a reverse shell. So, IP config, we are on 192.168.1.12 and you can do whatever you want uh, on this machine now because we have a full shell uh, of this XP machine. So that's it for this video. So difference between the last application SLMail and this application is we have utilized a different DLL which is a system level DLL because all the security protection were disabled and that's a behavior of XP and that was the reason we were able to use that memory address. So thank you very much. In next video, uh, I will cover SEH concept. So that will be basic theory around overview of uh, structured error handling and then one application around that concept. So thank you very much. Try to replicate these two labs in your lab 